Hi and welcome to the Port of Hambeck. I'm Benjamin and today's topic is building a half-timbered house in two stories. After completing uh, this diorama of the city wall, uh, I couldn't help thinking about, well, how about building something on the other side of the street so you can take photographs down here and then eventually perhaps a tower or some more wall in the background. Uh, but anyway, we needed a it would be fun to have a building here that's sort of a midi, uh, sort of a half timbered building that leans in over the street so um, i found some of my old uh, hearst arts castings fieldstone glued a bit together and then i cut uh, some wood as well i found a wonderful stick of wood in my local lo local uh, hobby and craft shop it measures uh, a half half times a half or five times five millimeter so it's a pretty good size for a sort of good sized half timbered uh, here's uh, here's the same building as, as up there uh, in unpainted and as you can see the large sort of corner posts are almost the same size pretty much the same size so i guess that would be that would be fine for a for a, a larger city building than this small uh, shack so I uh, cut some timber and then I aged it. It might be difficult to see, but I uh, took my uh, my saw here and moved it along the, to give it a bit of texture. It's not balsa wood, it's actually pine or something, so it's quite uh, sturdy. Uh, it takes a bit more effort to cut, but I'm just using my saw and that's fine. And then the idea is to build a house like this. So supports as well if they can somehow remain standing and uh, eventually that will turn into a lower end of a half timbered house like this in order to get an idea of how it might look i didn't want to start with a big house i found uh, some pictures of uh, the oldest townhouse in denmark actually that's from the early 1500s and then i built a model of its facade just a very simple uh, half tim just the timber and it looks like this as you can see it's quite small even compared to the small shed or compared to uh, the model here which is pretty much exactly 28 millimeter um, that's a small house I wanted something a bit bigger so uh, therefore I expanded it a bit a bit taller and and 50% uh, wider or so and I think that'll that'll be a, a good uh, a good size building then another story on top sort of leaning towards the street and uh, I'll scratch scratch build a door and then I think I'll um, use my laser cutter in order to create some uh, some windows that fit here but it's nice just sitting and well scratching along so uh, let me get building i want to finish uh, sort of the lower part of the facade uh, i was thinking a lot about do i build the entire house or perhaps just the front of it and i sort of settled on just building the front uh, because then it'll that's more than enough for photos and it takes much less time than building uh, an entire house also it takes up a bit of room in my small hobby room so uh, half a house that must be uh, that must be good enough for now in order to ensure that everything is pretty much even i like to use lego bridge bricks they are manufactured to a very high standard so they are very even easy and inexpensive this is my old toys from when i was a child many years ago uh, let me just show how I age the wood. This wood is brand new and very nicely uh, cut. So uh, I usually select the nicest side and then I take my uh, little saw here that I also use for cutting the wood. And then I just move it along a couple of times like this. And that creates quite a, a nice texture that I think will show up in the, in the dry brush. I don't know if you can, you can actually make it out but it is visible. Um, the edges here are also quite sharp. It doesn't really fitting for old wood, so I use my normal file and just rough the edges a bit. And uh, half-timbered buildings are actually quite an interesting technology. They uh, can be taken down and raised again and expanded. It's quite a modular system, so I imagine during that process uh, it will always also get bit worn so I also add a little extra sort of warmth 
wear and tear and damage to the wood just to give it a little extra texture for the dry brush and then it's time to glue it in place I use normal uh, uh, fast setting uh, white glue and that works perfectly for me now the basic framework for the lower level is complete like this it becomes quite sturdy very quickly but I guess there would need to be some sort of cross beam at once at one side or in both sides in order to ensure the stability of the building in real life I imagine just like uh, the old building from uh, from Denmark from the 1500s that I talked about earlier and uh, this one which as you can see is much smaller um, I think there'll be a door over here perhaps a couple of small windows whoops and then some sort of cross beam or, or beam here to support and then the next story will be on top something like this I'm not quite sure what the real uh, timber workers did did they place the beams on top like this or did they actually sink it in so it would uh, be like this rather with little little pieces uh, protruding from uh, from out here I think I'll have to check my library in order to see what makes most sense otherwise suddenly it becomes a very tall building even though there'll be a foundation layer of of, um, of cobblestone something a bit a bit taller probably perhaps like this it will still be a pretty bit big building for uh, for the city but it's fun it's nice scratch building uh, and doing something uh, that is just only yours so i spent some time cutting the the timber frames and i'm quite happy with the way it ended up i even inserted some uh, vertical sticks to try to make some uh, wattle, wattle and daub uh, filling but uh, i think it'll take a long time so i'm trying other techniques as well one of them was this uh, very thin uh, cork two millimeters thick that i found in my local hobby shop i bought some of that and you know it's curved you can sort of curve it the opposite way and then it comes pretty flat uh, I tried to cut out a piece to fit in one of the frames and that works quite well I haven't glued it in but it's quite solid and with a bit of glue I think that'll be a, a, a great surface for adding some plaster on top and uh, it's quite easy cutting because you can simply lay it down sort of halfway inside the frame and then and then cut it uh, and then it fits so uh, that might be one of the solutions so now I glued the walls together and filled out most of the, the rectangles here with a bit of um, with a bit of, of cork. I actually wanted to build up one of these uh, uh, areas in in the real way, building uh, some small uh, some small sticks here and then weaving the material in and out. But uh, I eventually gave up; uh, it was too much work. So now they're just filled with cork. And I also created some windows and a door frame uh, by using sort of wood from popsicle sticks, uh, just cutting them to be a frame for the window and then adding a bit of uh, some larger wood. And it was actually some wood I have left le left over from a laser cut kit of some kind that just that pretty much fit. I also created a door out of the same popsicle stick. I painted it blue, but a bit in doubt if that might be a bit of a rare color in the Middle Ages. I intend for the for the areas here to be either red or yellow to give a bit of uh, contrast. Uh, both white and yellow and red was quite common in, uh, in in earlier times in the Middle Ages. I also glued the walls to the foundation where I shaded the, the stones in individual colors and then brushed and, and, and washed some more on top so now they are more similar in appearance perhaps it needs another another wash. Inside it looks quite cozy actually I couldn't help putting a, some few, a few floor beams in here even though there are some floor planks on even though it is a bit of a waste of wood this one is good, great for stability but this one is just so you can place the miniatures inside and have them look out the window I don't intend to put any glass in the window that would have been very rare in the Middle Ages uh, the next step is building the next floor that will uh, uh, protrude a bit so I I made some uh, small pieces of wood um, 
that I rounded the corners so it'll look like this and can eventually uh, carry uh, the another beam on top here getting ready for for the next story so now I filled out all the spaces between the the, the fr frames with the cork two millimeter cork uh, and I built some windows and the lower end of the uh, lower floor uh, there are just bars for the window but up here uh, the owners of the house will have something more fanciful namely uh, small glass windows uh, in order to show off their wealth i've also added some small windows up here on top and i prepared a roof uh, from a foam card it will fit up here it's a bit uneven the building so i had to sort of squeeze it a bit in order to make it fit but now it fits quite well so uh, once i'm done painting uh, the, the frames I'll begin working on the on the roof but I think I'll fill this with some plaster and water uh, perhaps I could even color the plaster I have some pigment over here this um, that might be added to the plaster perhaps it'll be too light I think I'll experiment a bit often uh, these half timbered houses are, are white in between the the frames but uh, Yellow, red is also seen sometimes. Perhaps it would be interesting to make it a red house. So uh, I'll move along and see how uh, it is to fill up these uh, areas. Most half-timbered houses I've seen have either been white or ochre, yellow ochre or red. Uh, I tried first uh, keeping the white color from the, uh, from the gypsum, that looked pretty good. I tried over here to give it uh, some buff, to give it a bit of uh, buff, a titanium buff, to give it some little color, something to highlight on, not quite happy. Then I tried this uh, yellow ochre instead, and that looks really good, I think. Just needs to need to uh, to touch up the planks and weather it a bit, but there's actually, as you probably can see, there's quite a lot of natural weathering going on uh, on the uneven surfaces. So I'll uh, continue with, uh, with that color. So the whole house is yellow now and I uh, touched up the, the, the wood so now there's quite a big contrast. I think the uneven surface of, uh, of this filling material, the plaster and the cork, gives a, it's a very uneven surface and it gives it sort of a natural weathering, uh, a nice variation in color. But now it's time for a highlight of some uh, tan color to highlight both the uh, the timber and uh, and the filling as well. Let's see how that turns out.
So the next step is making a roof. I uh, cut a piece of uh, foam card uh, and sort of bend it in shape in order to, to fit on, uh, on my little uneven building. Then I uh, added a thin layer of uh, self-drying clay and used the end of an old comb to uh, scrape some rows into the wet clay in order to make it look a bit like a thatched roof. I think it looks okay now. It's quite gray, but uh, with the same color as I used in uh, the diorama of the city wall, I think it'll look quite nice. Perhaps I'll make a bit of variation in the colors since the houses will likely be just opposite each other. So now the roof is painted and glued in place. I used a, a series of washes, brown, green and light brown, in order to sort of make stripes down the roof to give it some texture. And while the washes were still wet, I uh, used a bit of flock on top to, uh, to represent moss growing on, uh, on, uh, on the roof. And I'm pretty satisfied. It might be a bit too dark, uh, but anyway, it doesn't really thick enough, there's still sort of a open space here so I think I'll put a little more clay here and then uh, to to make it look thicker uh, I think that'll look good and uh, other than that the house is pretty much finished but a bit more clay here to make it a larger roof so the house is done now I think uh, I'm pretty happy with the result it's a really wonderful scratch building doing something that uh, no one else uh, 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 will do uh, as opposed to the many uh, ready-made kits you can buy as you can see it's uh, quite open to the inside it's easy to add an interior if you wanted to do that I've just left it open for now uh, since I think I'll be mainly photographing it from the other side uh, the, I'm, it has been a lot of fun building a building in, in a similar way to how the original an original building might have been uh, might have been created filling out the spaces between the, the timbers I think it gives it a more a more realistic appearance and next step is building a house next to it and some street as well so it can be used across the street from uh, from my last diorama Thank you for following it, uh, the construction so far. If you liked what you see, please give the video a like and perhaps press subscribe. Uh, thanks for now.